Welcome to the Hackathon Showcase uh, for Wikimania. Yay! Um, before we get started, um, I have a couple things to say. Um, this was a very big event to plan, um, and there were a lot of people that did a lot of work to make it happen. So before we get started, I want to say thank you to the people involved. So first, we have Jan up here, who's doing 360 live streaming recording of this, so people can ah. remotely participate. So if we can clap for him. Yep. And we have Nick Wilson and Seaburn Maislin, co-organizers. Manuel and Luca spent a huge amount of time uh, making the Wi-Fi, readjusting things, um, and fixing problems as they came up, and hopefully that worked for everybody. Um, and then uh, we have the Sino Lario volunteers. I'm pretty sure I saw 25 different people around here like working as hard as they possibly could, so we should definitely give those guys a cheer. And last and definitely most important is uh, Simone Sala here from the Sino Lario team. <laughs> you have no idea how much work he did to make this hackathon happen. So, yes. Um, and one more thing before we start this event um, this room has interesting acoustics. So, if you have a side conversation, Please take it outside, and if you hear someone next to you having a side conversation, feel free to give them a nice shh so everyone can hear. And here we go. All right, welcome everybody. Uh, the uh, first project that we need to be setting up is the URL shortener project. So if you're on this list, uh, please make sure that you come forward. The numbers two and three, please um, gather uh, in the front left. Um, everyone will have um, three minutes. Um, um, you have a choice of computers. You can use mine or you can connect to the uh, monitor on my left. Um, uh, no photo uh, people uh, that want to do a presentation, um, please wait until the end. We'll, uh, we'll shut off all cameras then. Um, so that would be UV, Lego or Joe now? Make sure you don't trip over any cables. Uh, hello. Uh, for the past two years, UV and I and a few other people have been working on making a URL shorter for Wikimedia projects. And at the hackathon, we roped Joe in to help finish up the last piece. Uh, so if you go to w.wiki slash two, it redirects you to the targeted for URL, which is wikimedia.org. Yay, you didn't even notice anything <laughs> different happened, right? Yay. Um, uh, so it's currently not live, but in the future, in about two weeks, I think, if you go to w.wiki, there will actually be a form there that lets you create your own short URL, and any Wikimedia domain will be allowed, so it's like a whitelist. Um, the main goal of doing this is that people don't have to use third-party URL shorteners, which are like a privacy problem, um, they crack you, and as well as a reliability problem. So we already have code set up to publish dumps um, for the URLs that are generated. So right away, starting out, um, anyone can like mirror the service, and if like in the future the service does go dead, we won't have dead links everywhere where we don't know they go. Um, so at the hackathon, what we mainly did was Joe tried to help, help us put in Apache rewrite rules to get this to work. And after about two hours of fumbling around with Apache, we decided that was not worth it, and we added four lines of code in our varnish configuration, and it worked perfectly. <laughs> so, yeah. And that's it. Next, we have Amir.
your ankle. Okay. Hello, I'm Amir. I, I was working on this uh, gadget, which is a very simple gadget, uh, but might be very useful for you. Uh, in the past couple of weeks, but uh, with the help of Jonas from the community of Deutschland and several other people, uh, we made it happen. Uh, it was in the, if you go to your Wikidata and your preferences and you go enable AZ query, and then, for example, if you go to item of Mona Lisa and you see there is a simple three dots beside any of a statement, and you, and you click on it and uh, request a uh, Sparkle query and shows you all other state, uh, all other items that does have this statement. For example, or in this case, you can see Last Supper or other version of the rocks. And if you want to see more, you can click on Wikidata and it will bring you to the place that's the query, and you can run it or modify it if you want to. And uh, I don't want more than this, so basically that's it. Just, just checking, this is implemented as a gadget and yes. people can enable it now already? Yes. Okay, cool. Next we have Easy Query. No, sorry. Uh, visual Editor in Wiki Source page. Hi, I am Thomas and I have worked with James on Visual Editor support for Wikisource page pages. So now if you go to Wikisource beta, beta, you could just click on a page page. You could just click edit. So you could start editing, so as usual. So you see that page pages are not just regular uh, Wikitext pages. So you have the body that is you see, basically, the profile text, and then you could have a header for, for example, to represent the word the wind in the willows, that is a header of the page, and also a footer. And then you have a profiling. And then now, what you could do is just switch to Visual Editor. And there it is. So you could just do your profiling. If you look at, oh, there is a typo, so I could just Edit. Now let's see if I go to save. I could review my change. And then, yes, the um, typo is edited. And I could, of course, switch back to Wikitext. And it's working too. <laughs> Say when you expect this to be in production? Uh, it should be in in the uh, Visual Editor beta feature that is currently deployed on Wikisource next Tuesday. Okay, next we have event website ladies that false. Yeah. Do you like to say something about that? Do you want to have anything displayed? Uh, yeah, just open the website. Okay, so um, uh, um, yeah, hi, I'm Lucy. I usually do coding stuff, and I usually participate in open source projects as wiki base and uh, article placeholder and stuff. Um, but I thought this time um, there is a thing I really want to do and really want to have. So a friend of mine from Wikimedia Germany as well. And I um, started planning an event. Um, and what I did while well, the hackathon was uh, yeah, planning the event, doing the website, and um, talking to people. So uh, what we do is, um, so the problem we often have in open source is that only 11% of people in open source are women. So we want to have an approach to actually change that. And we thought the nicest way and the easiest way to change that is actually finding programmers, female programmers, that are interested in open source and bring them together with a project of their interest. Um, so we have that event and 
uh, end of the October in Berlin, where we do that. We invite projects, uh, we invite women to come and uh, match with a project and work on that project for a day. Um, that's about it. Thank you. Uh, yes, for all the programmers in here, we know we should do test driven development. That includes uh, acceptance tests for uh, coding the right thing and unit tests for uh, coding the things right. Uh, MediaWiki has a vagrant machine that uh, has a configurable test environment but is only equipped for running unit tests. Uh, if you want to run the acceptance test, it uh, requires you to configure your own computer with a rather cumbersome Ruby environment and a certain version of Firefox. Uh, the problem is that Firefox 47 is not um, compatible with the Selenium uh, web driver. So I came up with a, if you scroll down, I for, uh, just a little bit, which one? Um, set up local test environment. Just click on it. Uh, a little bit more down, please. More, yeah. So here, this is a um, a fork of MediaWiki Vagrant that I equipped with a um, desktop system, XFCE, and a complete optimized Ruby environment, uh, and actually all the endpoints for the tests. Uh, this is the way to set it up, so you can try that out. The next thing that I will do is uh, find easy ways to uh, implement your extensions on that machine and have uh, conjunction tests because the ultimate idea is to have a certification program for the extensions that would allow us to say this extension runs with 127 core and all other extensions that by themselves are certified for 127 and one of the qualitative uh, arguments for that certification is the fact that all the acceptance tests uh, pass and all the unit tests pass. That's it. No, every second counts. <laughs> I'm only starting to block now. Oh, oh, oh. Check signal table. It's PC, not HDMI. It's uh, no panic. Okay, uh, so <coughs> yeah, I'm doing so this. Yeah, sure. Doing this her hackathon, I uh, worked a bit on the uh, spherical panorama viewer on Commons. Uh, actually, I wrote the first version in, uh, in Mexico City for the uh, for the last hackathon. Mm -hmm. So we have a couple of uh, spherical panoramic images on Commons. Um, the viewer could so far display them at a reduced resolution. Huh? Oh yeah, sure. Uh, better? Slightly better. Okay, so we have a template uh, in here with which we tag uh, panoramic images. I can click that. Uh, so my thingy is basically a wrapper around a um, WebGL-based panorama viewer. So what you can see down here, uh, it's already disappeared. Uh, the new thing is that I'm now able to uh, deliver high-resolution versions of these panoramic images. Uh, and what it does is, uh, in the background, while a, a low-resolution preview is shown, the uh, user can only already look at, on the uh, two left grid infrastructure, a high-resolution version is tiled, and there's some uh, polling going on. Apparently, ah, here we go. Click to show high-resolution version. So now the grid job is finished, and I can click on here. Switch over to the slightly higher resolution version. I have a couple of examples. Here's one uh, panoramic image. You can actually count the pixels here. <laughs> and uh, so if you uh, go to the high resolution version, which the users are now 
uh, after it is rendered once, they, uh, they are presented with that by uh, default. So another cool thing that I managed to do uh, today, if I go on this category, for example, click on this, oh no, the media view uh, pops up. There is no uh, template that the user can click on, but aha, uh -huh. yeah, uh, <laughs> well, uh, the button which I hacked in there, and now, boom, uh, spherical panorama. <laughs> So the button in the media, in media viewer, that, that's beta, uh, uh, that's, that's not live on comments yet, but the rest of the viewer, uh, that's, that's totally live. All right. Thank you, Daniel. Just to be sure, this can be used right now, right? Right now, that's right. Hi, guys. Uh, I'm Tony Thomas, coming from India. So I was just bugging Kunal over here on implementing logging for our newsletter extension. It's still in beta, so he actually became angry at me, and he, but not, not angry, he just told me why don't we just implement Content Handler to or make the newsletter a wiki page so that uh, on clicking view history, we have the entire history of uh, whatever actions we have done, like somebody edits the description or somebody adds a publisher. So uh, I was working on that for the past uh, two, three days, and uh, we could get a patch. So, yeah. so uh, just click on this view history. Uh, which, which? Uh, yeah. Yeah. View, view history. Okay. Sorry. So, uh, so right now everything is uh, properly logged, like creating a newsletter, then somebody edits the description, uh, it's properly logged. Uh, and also, on the other pad, uh, there's a patch. Uh, the patch is actually in Gerrit. Uh, it's like roughly uh, 600 lines, mostly copied from the mass message, which actually implements content handler. So if anyone is free, just take time to review it. Um, yeah. Yeah. So uh, I could get the thing changed to content handler. So we hope to get it into production soon. Thanks to Kunal, who, uh, Kim Gill, everyone who helped. <coughs> One more question. So this will be usable right after this code has been merged, or like within a week, right? Oh yeah, uh, within a week we can get it into beta, then to production. Okay. We might take one more. So this will be uh, live somewhere within a month. Oh, yeah. 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 Cool. Yeah. Security review. Yeah. Security review. Ah, security review. Yeah. <laughs> 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 uh, next we have Marcus. Do you need your own computer? Yeah. yeah. Uh, I can do it. So yeah, um, what I did is um, I tried to experiment a little bit with Lua um, and get myself familiar. So I maintain an extension um, that's called Blue Spice. It's a really big extension, and we want to make the data that um, Blue Spice produces available to you, uh, Lua and for use in Lua. So actually, what we have is um, there is a feature called Responsible Editor, which you can see here. So this is an editor that's uh, picked out to be responsible for a page. Um, and now what I can do is I can read this data um, from within the text um, using Lua. Um, and here's the proof that it actually is a Lua script, so I invoke um, a Lua script here. Um, and that's just the beginning for uh, Blue Spice to be Lua-fied, if you wish. Um, so uh, we want to success uh, successively um, do all or a lot of other information and make it also available via Lua. That's it. Uh, probably in the next release, which is about in, uh, due in, in September or October. So that's the start of this. Thanks.
Yeah, it's good to yeah, large for this. Yeah. Okay. So uh, this is going to be the less sexy presentation of all because it's going to be the day one is going to be uh, a terminal, but well, whatever. Okay. So uh, some of you may remember that two years ago at the developer summit, I was arguing about going to a service-oriented architecture for the WMF systems because I said there are a lot of things that we need to do so that this is manageable. And the main problem for me was the idea of monitoring because whenever we do a new service, we have to think about monitoring of it. And well, uh, Marco and the rest of the service team came to help because all of our services are based on the Swagger API, uh, the Swagger specs. So they expose a specification of how they work. This is done by the Open API initiative nowadays. Let's see an example of the, the for example, the documentation for rest days that you can find online. And it's a very nice documentation that's generated from the Swagger, from the Swagger spec. So you can see, you can see all the methods and everything very clearly, and you can see how you can query the API. And this is an example of a specification for mobile apps specifically. You can see here that basically you have a section that's called examples where you see, sorry? Yeah. Maybe. Is it visible now? More? Okay, sorry. This should be okay. So basically you have a methods and paths, right? So you have this path and then you have examples of our request should work and our response is going to be. And what we did is we did a, a simple tool that just takes queries the service for this specification, takes the example section and just queries the service, the live service and checks if uh, both the request and the response correspond to the, spe the specification. So it does functional testing of all the endpoints that the developer decided should be monitored in production. This means that there is no action from operations and the developers can manage that and then find problems in production and solve them directly, which is Marco is doing all the time. So to make a small example of it, I guess I have to increase the font a lot. Yes. And now we can use more. More, yeah, sorry. Yeah, I have to hurry up. It's going to be very fast. So basically, the tool has a few options. Let's see. Now let's check just for a second. REST based in production. Like you can see here, we are contacting any Wikipedia org directly. And hopefully, this will say in a few seconds that all endpoints are healthy. So the service is working correctly. Luckily, or we'll have to, to run right now to fix it. <laughs> <laughs> and that's it. Like you see these um, the page titles which are flagged as copyright edits and uh, a link to the diff that was the copyright violation edit and the editor and their edit count which gives you an idea of how experienced an editor they would be and you can log in using a lot and then you can mark your review as page fixed or no action needed whatever um, and also you can um, check what, what uh, wiki project is the page associated with, and you can uh, also in future filter by wiki projects. So quickly, I'll, go, I'll show you the compare thing. So yeah, so this is a compare screen that tells you 
that this was the article edit and this was the source from which it has been copyrighted from and you can compare and then mark your review. That's it. Thank you. This is available as of now on toollabs, uh, tools.tablinflabs.org slash copy patrol. Do not forget that copy patrol. <laughs> Hi, um, I'm Marius. I'm working in a Wikidata team for Wikimedia Germany. And so uh, I was looking at a Wikidata item, and as you probably know, you can link images on Wikidata items. Mm -hmm. So I was checking out like the images on one Wikidata item, and I found it like quite inconvenient to look at them. I can show you how it currently looks. Like for example, the item for Italy. As you can see, for example, we have the coat of arms images over here, and there's that little box besides it, but there's a gadget, and that gadget just opens that, that dialog, which just shows you the picture, but it's like a fixed size, and so it's not like uh, not very useful for like larger images or panoramas or anything, and it also doesn't show you like any additional information about the image. So I thought that we have something very similar on the Wikipedias, right? Like something which can show us like images in the pop-up. So, so I made a demo about um, using using um, media viewer for this. I'm just going to log into my email account. <laughs> I specifically created that account for this. <laughs> So, so in this account, I've disabled the gadget and um, put a user script in place, which is basically the same gadget, but it uses Media Viewer instead of like the old way to display images. So, so for example, here you can see like the Wiki Voyage banner, and now we click on the very same box, and here we go. We have Media Viewer popping up with all additional media information and the license and everything. You can also go back and forth between all images which are used in that item. So that's, uh, that makes the images within Wikidata items better accessible and also like displays more media information about them. Um, it's not yet a gadget, but I guess it could be turned into one and like long term it might also be turned into like Wikibase or something, but it was just, just a quick demo which I hacked up. has not been involved in hackathon. So who of you have not been involved in a hackathon? Can you raise your hand if you've not been involved in a hackathon? Okay, thanks. Okay, so suppose you want to uh, put a list of uh, monuments to your fellow Wikilabs monuments people, and uh, you know they will be offline, but you want to send them some PDFs. So you say PDF, download PDF, and uh, open the PDF and, oh no, the tables are missing. That's, the document is formatted beautifully, which works for most books, 
but uh, yeah, it doesn't contain tables because it's a very, very hard problem that uh, would need a lot of developers to fix it. So we have a stopgap measure. This is my private, uh, uh, my, my local uh, wiki, and uh, I try to download, and this will fail because uh, I don't have the infrastructure, but there is a new link here, which will appear later in the, um, in the success page on, on the uh, official site, and when, when I click this, then, hopefully, yeah, I get the print version of this uh, page, and uh, the tables are in. It's not as beautiful, but it works and contains all the pages. This is a, a local version, but we will be, yeah, we, we are uh, presenting this as an alternative to the PDF export when you need tables. And uh, I think it will be live this the next month or something like that. Yeah, in, uh, this year, <laughs> it will be live this year. <laughs> The in signal, it's on PC. Okay, anyway, I'll just yeah. uh, tell. Okay. okay, hi people. Um, I implemented the EPUB generator for the currently used um, offline content generator because it was in community wish on the wish list. And um, I created a first rep and I like to make it available as soon as I got my repository. <laughs> I'm waiting for confirmation and then I will make an upload to Garrett and um, the OCG developer can integrate it. And um, actually, there's already a button, if they like. Um, it's just in configuration, and um, it's in, in console tool. It's like you can just um, input a text like, um, yeah, get, generate EPUB, and it's based on export of Bundler. And OCG Bundler is already working with PDF export or live version, and um, the new EPUB generator is compatible with the comments. So it should be really easy to integrate it. And um, pictures are integrated and uh, working, and it's uh, CSS configurable. So um, VMF can create a CSS for um, common style for all ebooks, and um, so they have a common view of books. So my name is Tim Moody, and I'm one of about 10 people, actually. 
i'm yeah i'm one of about ten people who actually came here on the sixteenth to have a kiwix and internet in a box hackathon prior to the wiki hackathon and there were there were a number of some projects involved with that and i want to talk a little bit about those and then i want to show how they come to be embodied in internet in a box so some of those hang on some of those some of these projects are internal to kiwix and how many people have heard of kiwix so everybody's heard of kiwix kiwix is a is a server that serves up a compressed form of the wiki properties also with an index and so there there are a number of optimizations that are that were done as part of this hackathon speed optimizations to bring the index inside the zim file so it makes it more manageable and some some speed and speed improvements and then there's some things that you you would be able to see which are the the ability to take any arbitrary url and zim it up in a way that it could be used by the kiwix server also focused on youtube in particular kiwix also operates as a mobile app and so that to be able to have youtube's embodied in a zim file for that and also fet which is a university of colorado physics simulation and also various various other optimizations and my my part in all this is actually has to do with the internet in the box so this is this is internet in the box running on a semi-public server it's actually my private server but just as an example and so just to look at a few things so the the wikipedia in english and the wiktionary these are both served up by by kiwix so if you click on that up comes this is a snapshot of the wikipedia obviously because it's been captured as a as a zip file but that's that's there kiwix implements a a free a full text full text search so you can you can search for various various pages in the wiki and then if i take it back 30 though and so these are the other things the ted talks are also served up by by kiwix and then there are other properties on the server as well okay Hello, um, I'm, I'm Yubi. I'm going to be demoing Pause, um, which is uh, Pause, a web shell, um, which is like we're going to. I'll just show you. Still descriptions. So uh, I'm going to sign in with MediaWiki. You can go to this URL right now. It's pause.wmf.org. It's going to ask for all the permissions in the world. I'll explain later why. Um, you will trust it and love it, as everyone does. Um, you can click My Server. You won't have the other options. Um, and then this opens up a server. This is a container running just for you. You can actually code in it. You can share fun stuff with it. I'll show you some of the things you can do with this. Um, there is a web terminal that you can use from here. Um, so you click New, Terminal. This is a fully-fledged JavaScript web terminal that is running in a Linux container with a lot of useful utilities installed. Um, so just PyWikiBot. So I can actually just log in to PyWikiBot, and it'll log in as me. That's why it asks for all the auth permissions. Um, so when you gave that, it automatically got itself into the terminal, and you can make edits like yourself. Um, so I'm going to make a simple edit, which is I'm going to add a text to my user page on TestWiki. And it should do that, and it waits for a while because it doesn't want to spam things. 
and then if I go to test wiki, it would be there. Uh, test wiki.org contributions. I'm not logged in. I'm not going to show that, but trust me, it did. It, it, it. Okay. Uh, yeah. Oh what? Go to resume changes. Uh, sure. No, I have too much demo. <laughs> Uh, so that's not so that's the fully fleshed ML. You have Emacs, Vim, uh, Elinks, and other text mode browsers. Um, so you can play with that, uh, and you know you're, you have home directories and whatnot. So that's one of the cool parts. But there are more. Um, so you can actually have notebooks. Have people heard of notebooks? Uh, you can execute code in them, and they will have output, and then you can show them to people. Uh, so I have a bunch of these demos. I'm going to show one of them, which is Hello World. So I just click Create New Notebook. This is running Python 3. I hit Hello World, and it's Hello World. Um, and I can also make that be interactive. So this is interactive Hello World. I can say things to it, and it will run. Um, that works. It also has interactive maps. Uh, sorry, not maps, graphs. Uh, so this is an interactive graph that I can publish uh, based off of some data. Um, and this has also wiki style imports. So this is like a template, right? Like I have a function that is a notebook that is implemented by me and I'm importing it and using it in the rest of my code. Uh, with parameterized SQL queries. So people like, like how one person has to struggle with all the template syntax, but then the rest of them can use it without having to worry about what's going on in there. It's just a nice abstraction. Uh, that you can use without having to dig through whole of software in 101 and sacrificing a year of your life to the commandment gods. Um, so yeah, there's a lot more to this. Please go and play with it right now. It's available. You just need a Wikimedia account and not be blocked globally. second. <laughs> Zim files are great, but you have to download so much data and you can't edit it. Um, and he said, yeah, he was working on that. But um, I knew there was a git, uh, making MediaWiki a git remote for, wait, making MediaWiki a remote for git. So I hadn't tried it and talking to the Kiwix guy encouraged me to try it. And I tried it, and it was buggy. And it's still buggy, but it's less so now. And it actually works. You can see here I've checked out a bunch of uh, revisions for for this wiki. Um, and and then I haven't tried yet. Uh, we will uh, try commit editing and then committing, and you can do all that offline, and then push it to the wiki and. Updated. So, yeah, what what could be better for editing offline than Git? <laughs> anyway, that's it. And and I didn't have wireless a lot of today, so I don't have a lot of links. But yeah, it's up there. And it's actually in my Git repo, which yeah, the media wiki branch of that. Anyway, that's it.
Hi, I'm Jelko de Samir. Uh, we work for the nation. I'm a contractor at Release and Jake team. He's at Flames team. So uh, a year or two ago, we were mentors for um, um, the Summer of Code project. Um, that was taking screenshots for documentation. So for example, this is Visual Editor documentation. There's a lot of screenshots that people used to take manually and crop them and highlight areas. So uh, because uh, the student, with some of our, of our help, uh, created uh, a tool that takes screenshots, crops them, highlights uh, portions. So if you click uh, this image, you will see it's hosted in the commons, uploaded by this bot. You can see a ton of contributions with some highlights. Um, it was in Jenkins running as needed uh, for creating, uh, creating screenshots for 15 languages or so at, at its peak. Uh, but there was a problem. So it was written in Ruby, and there's not a lot of people that were willing to fix problems. So Visual Editor changed, and the script would die, and then like nobody had time to fix it. So we talked and talked, and then we decided to um, we we started doing some uh, test animation with Selenium and JavaScript. So we decided to try porting the tool to JavaScript, um, and 26 commit later with a lot of help from Ed Sanders that actually paired for hours the other day I'll be able to hang out because it's not here. Um, it's a good thing to like drive all the way here and then pair with somebody on Hangouts. Um, <laughs> it's also in Garrett. It's not yet in CI, but I can uh, show a demo on my machine. The demo will be really quick. So around the text, you, you'll see. Um, uh, never mind the text, it's just saying what screenshots is taking. It's, it runs here, you can see that it yeah. runs here and open windows and things so by themselves. No hands. <laughs> <laughs> no hands. So it's uh, using Selenium and it's JavaScript bindings to open the browsers, navigate to pages. Uh, it's using Visual Editor API actually to drive the browser that proved to be way simpler for Ed to, uh, like to, not, uh, to automate the browser. Uh, like all the cool stuff uh, and did a ton of work while we were sleeping here or, uh, or having beer. Um, <laughs> and it'll, it will finish in a second and I want to show you sc uh, screenshots. Uh, the next, so if uh, this looks interesting and you would like to do this for your project, please um, get in touch. We have uh, business cards and there's a fabricator task is linked from the, from the Etherpad and we will be around. Can I have two more seconds to show all the screen, screenshots? Yes. And while he's showing, I, I'll just add that uh, it's part of our effort to translate everything. So, just quickly, I mean, screenshots, but just because. <laughs> <laughs> So, uh, I'm just going to start with some background. Uh, this is WikiHow, they have a skin, they're, they're open source, they use MediaWiki. And last year, I think it was, Jack Phoenix decided to fork the skin and make it something that could actually be reused by other projects, which turned out to be kind of a big thing. And it mostly worked, but we didn't really get it entirely working. And we can't really maintain it, which is the main problem. What you cannot see is that behind that blue bar, there's an error message because something's <laughs> been deprecated. And we couldn't even, we just can't, couldn't keep up with all things getting deprecated because it was just a bit of a mess in the source. So 
what I did, when I started after the last hackathon, is I basically lost it and decided to just re-implement the entire thing from scratch. <laughs> so this is what I've got so far. It's not done, but it's starting to actually look like the skin, and it's less messy. Oh, yes. What's that photo? <laughs> what? What's that photo? That is a cow. <laughs> 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 <Yes>. <laughs> it's actually, I think it was a featured image on Collins at some point. I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> you did? Oh, good job. It's very nice. Okay, yes, I don't really have anything. Okay, we have two more presentations and then one more with uh, our cameras. I'll just, uh, I'll just talk since I, I don't have a lot to uh, demo. Uh, I've been working on a tool to uh, basically analyze the lead paragraphs of uh, Wikipedia articles. I've been using some uh, text mining techniques with the, the goal uh, of uh, uh, basically identifying uh, lead sections which are too long or too short. Um, uh, um, sorry. Uh, beside this, I'd like to look if uh, people have put into the, the lead some material which is not uh, appearing at all in the rest of the article, vice versa, and basically report uh, this kind of uh, results as an advice for improvement. Um, I haven't got everything uh, working uh, quite well, but I have uh, some code running and I've been able to put it into pause. Uh, unfortunately, not much to show at the moment. <laughs> So I hope uh, it'll be up and running within uh, a week or two. Uh, can, can you get someone else in, in the meantime? Uh, uh, no. Ah, it's horrible. Mm -hmm. uh, ha uh, clock, clock is running and the plushies are watching you. Yeah, I know. <laughs> no, pressure. Work, no pressure. No pressure. How do I? One minute. <laughs> <laughs> oh. That's the evil. Yes. It's actually two minutes and forty seconds left. All right. Does it defend anything? Does it defend anything? No, it doesn't defend anything. Very much more. Yeah. No, no, no. Oh, wonderful. Okay, cool. Uh, right. Yeah. Oh. No, yes. oh. Mm -hmm. Okay, cool. Um, Sorry. Mike. Yeah. Mike. Yes, Mike. Thank you. Thank you. Oh, better. Um, who here has heard of Windows Monuments? Good. Uh, so I don't have to explain it, but it's, I'll do it anyway. It's a contest about, um, it's, it's about uh, cultural heritage and gathering data about all the monuments in the world. And there is a lot of tech behind it. Um, so we've got all these tractor lists, and they're on Wikipedia, <coughs> and they're part in this humongous, horrible uh, monuments database of like 1.4 million items. Um, uh, so at every hackathon, we do a sprint with Andre over here, and Martin, and a couple of other people. And uh, this focus issue was a bit about um, um, linking more to Wikidata. Um, we did some work into um, adding Iron in Farsi, so more database. Thank you, Layla. Um, uh, so I can actually show that. Um, yep, yep, that's, that's Netherlands. No, so that's Iran in Farsi, and there's like no pictures. So if you're going to Iran soon, uh, don't forget your camera. Um, yeah. Um, there is a column with Wikidata item because now we're like gathering all the Wikidata items in the. Well, there's nothing to see. That's what I'm trying to hide. Uh, but, <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, um, 
It's not parsed. I, it, it, the database is like updating right now as I speak, so it's kind of um, boring. Oh, oh, damn it. Damn it. Damn. Ah. One minute. Ubuntu, yeah. Um, yep, and uh, um, last thing I wanted to show actually is that um, this is actually running on localhost. Um, this has been horrible to develop because we had no other way basically rather than oh, deploying it and breaking everything and uh, doing it over again. So this is uh, running um, locally entirely using um, uh, Docker Compose, so it's spinning up two Docker containers, one with a MySQL uh, database, another one with a PHP web server, and it downloads the latest dump of the monomous database. So you can, in two commands, like git clone, uh, download database, and Docker Compose up, and you get a fully featured developer environment. So all of you, you have no excuse to not hack anymore on this. I, sure. It doesn't have to be me. Thank you. <laughs> I wanted to show some, does this work? Yeah, something on my phone, but like the best way it came up with. Yeah, so like I made a, a short little video like from my phone. And so I'm Katie Zarad and I'm one of the Wikidata developers over the years. Like I've generally been around at like deployment time like, which is in the evening Berlin time, and so, like, when there's a problem, like, which, like, is rare, but sometimes it happens, and then I've been one of the people who gets to fix it, and um, so, like, our code gets deployed normally every other week as part of the MediaWiki train, which means every, like, Tuesday, a uh, new MediaWiki and extension code goes on test wikis, on Wednesdays, it goes on Wikidata, Commons, and sister projects. On Thursdays, it goes on Wikipedia's. Any one of those times, like there's a possibility of a problem with Wikidata or something else. And so, like I try to help. Um, lately, like I've been traveling more, or like in different time zones, so I get like confused now. Like, oh, like when is deployment? Or sometimes, like, like. Even when I'm around, like you have to sit around for hours. Sometimes they're late for some reason. So, um, like I want a way like to get like notifications when like the deployment happens. Then I can hop on IRC on my phone and just check. Like, like this is a more effective way. So, so here's like the deployment page. Um, yeah, so that just shows you like, like the train, so you can see like when it happens. Um, like, here, like I'm pretending to be the log message bot and uh, saying like like deploys happen right now. Like, it gets reported on, on the wiki and the logs. Yeah, yeah. So I just like save it and then and then I'm like gonna go back to like my phone and like it'll just take like a few seconds. Um, yeah. And I got like at the top like a notification and then yeah, like I got it. It's not very sophistic sophisticated right now. Um, <laughs> <laughs> What's interesting here is like on Thursday I got like two of these. Like that's a bad thing because like that means it got reverted. Um, I, I would like to make this better. Like maybe like know about like uh, like unbreak now fabricator bugs or or like other things. And and right now it's like more hard coding for just me to use. But I want like I think Marius wants to have this and other people might find it useful. So that's like what I'm working on. Thank you. Okay, the last presentation is a no photos presentation. We can keep on streaming, but uh, 
Yeah, turn the camera the other way yeah. or focus it on the screen and not on the presenter. Or oh, the plushies. Or the plushies. On the plushies, yes. yeah. <laughs> I'm Lesek from Wikimedia Germany. Uh, what I will show here is basically a tiny little follow-up to Jerusalem Hackathon. Uh, what, I, what you can see, or people with camera, uh, with watching streaming, I don't know if they can see, sorry for that, but uh, this is a new way of comparing revisions that we've been working in Berlin uh, for a few weeks. Uh, Basically, what you see is a normal D view, but on the top of it, you, there is a bar or a plot showing uh, revisions uh, depicted as, as bars, and there are tiny pointers that you can drag or or, or move around. Uh, it's pretty slow right now, but I'm guessing this is not our fault. But this is the re the reason is that revisions that be, are being shown are from 2011, so there is some database uh, delay. Uh, as you can see, when I move around on this on this plot, the div view uh, reloads. Uh, yeah, this project has been started by two of my colleagues on Jerusalem Hackathon when they basically hijacked the, some ideas from the community <laughs> tech team. Then we turned up turned out turned a, a simple gadget prototype they created into an extension. Uh, this extension is now uh, available as a beta feature on Bitia Wikipedia, as you can see here. Uh, the, uh, you can see, find uh, this extension on, on MediaWiki.org on extension column revisions later page. Uh, the source code is there, so you can go to beta and uh, enable the feature, try it out, or browse, look at the code, uh, submit patches. We are very uh, Looking forward to that, and what I, we've been doing at Hackathon was mostly talking to, to, to people, showing this to people, and fixing some tiny problems with IATN issues uh, and brushing up the, I, the UI. That's it. That concludes the, uh, the presentation part of this uh, showcase. We had uh, 23 presentations, uh, and we did it in an uh, hour and five minutes. Um, now there is a competition, and the competition is going to be very brief. You all have one minute to type a number into the etherpad, and the number that is closest to the Bandwidth peak during the hackathon wins the USB key to the city of Isinolario. <laughs> <laughs> so, the, the etherpad is uh, is.gd slash wm showcase 16, or the URL that you see here, T132719. Your name, and what, is, what should the unit be? Yeah, what should the unit be? Megabits per second? Okay, so in megabits per second. So your name and um, uh, is.gd slash wm showcase 16. One minute is running now. The person that is, uh, the person that is closest to the uh, traffic peak during the hackathon in megabits per second. No, it's just a number because we already specified the unit.
20 seconds. Go, go, go. And please don't delete uh, contributions from others. <laughs> this screen now so you can't contribute anymore. Oh, wait. Uh, oh, you get the prize now. Okay, so st please stop contributing. Um, Simon? Oh, Simon has an, uh, an emergency. <laughs> ah, that's the USB key, including all uh, NSA spyware. <laughs> Uh, what's the right number, Simone? Oh. <laughs> okay, we're trying to find out now because we didn't know yet. Thank you for your patience. Is what is talking? We can see you. The network is not going very well. Several people haven't yet had their version show up on screen. Ah, the person saying 8,000 has no name, so that's disqualified. Okay, so we have 24 people actually competing. Tension is building. Tension. Yes. Can we make some music together? I can play Barbie Girl. <laughs> you and you, we can sing Barbie Girl. Oh, maybe. Yeah. Or Katie and I. Oh, yeah. Or. Well, Thomas is not here, but I did it with Thomas. I'm not now. True. You're killing us, Simone. I know. It is on purpose, Do you have some elevator music? <laughs> hmm. I will fire up the old Napster. Do you want me to upload this to Commons or not? Your copywriting is your recording. Oh, you pay for your music. Come on. I can sing some Italian song if you want. Yes? How is yours? Why is the music off? Because you've got HDMI. The music is in there somewhere. Okay. Ah, you have it? Oh, just say it. I mean, we have an... Uh, yeah, we, we copied it officially, so... Come on. Everyone do something oh. in their head. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. He's double checking. Oh, okay. It's <laughs> rifle checking. Quadruple checking. Okay. You, you wrote the same number three times now? Don't be safe, though. We're talking about combined upstream and downstream. The correspondence with the jury has to be in writing. We need five copies of everything and it needs to go to a no, no, postal, bo postal box in the Seychelles. It's Eurovision. It's satellite TV. You mean, you mean no one? This is getting in the way. Your vote, please. It's you. East one. <laughs> five? And that was five? I should have given you more time to answer the question. Or more time is in order to get the number. <laughs> The interesting thing is just telling me the average. The average? Yeah. Oh. Oh, tell us now. Piccolo. Piccolo? Piccolo. 6-8, confirm it. 
68 megabit per second. That was the peak. 68 megabit. That's so underwhelming. 68. I'm gonna top with the Ethernet. So we have 117. It's the lowest. We have two gigabytes. We have a winner. It's Lego. <laughs> So that concludes this session. It was wonderful having you here. Um, uh, there's a fabricated task. If you have any comments uh, uh, to, to help in the evaluation of this showcase, please uh, please put them in a fabricated task because we want to learn uh, and, uh, and improve this uh, event. Um, one of the things that we want to do and that we tried to do this year was uh, get a slot on the main program that unfortunately we failed and we think that's uh, Armed attendance a bit, um, but yeah, okay. Next year uh, maybe better. Thanks for being here. See you next time.